escritores de primera línea, como es el caso de Lisa Mood, quien está con nosotros. Nos va a conceder unos minutos para conocer un poco más de su literatura, autora de dos libros de cuentos, de una novela, y bueno, y otro tipo de trabajos también. Welcome, Lisa. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you, Arnaldo. Thanks. It's great to be here. Pues lo primero que quisiera saber es, yo he visto una gran cantidad de mujeres escritoras en Canadá y además muy inclinadas a hacer cuentos, historias cortas. ¿Qué está pasando en la literatura canadiense y con las mujeres canadienses que están escribiendo? Well, we just had um, uh, Maeve, um, Alice Munro win the Nobel prize for literature and um, I think that was a tremendous boost especially for young women writers in Canada to see that happen you know the short story has always been a form that it's difficult to sell it's difficult to convince people to take it into their hands but uh, I think when when Alice Munro won that prize and even before she won that prize Her stories are, are so deeply affecting. They're so full of, you know, what happens in women's lives that, um, that it had a huge effect on writers all across Canada. We also have Mavis Gallant, who uh, is a powerful short story writer from Canada, who, she lived in Paris most of her life, and she published over 100 short stories in The New Yorker. And of course, Margaret Atwood, who also writes short stories. So we have these powerful women. I think of them as, as the you know, tri triumvirate of women who are championing the short story and championing women's stories. Bueno, y el otro, el otro tema que te quería preguntar. Tú ves una, creo que la literatura canadiense, y es mi impresión, es muy joven. Quizás porque también es un país muy joven, ¿no? ¿Cómo conecta con otras tradiciones? ¿O me equivoco, quizás? Uh, I, I don't know how, how young it is. I mean, certainly... Well, I'm from Newfoundland, which is an island on the east coast of Canada. It is the closest point to Europe uh, for North America. So um, we're out in the North Atlantic, and um, we're close to the Arctic Circle. So... Um, Very cold very cold with icebergs and but in the summers it's lovely uh, and warm um, so I in a way we joined Canada we were the last province to join Canada we joined in 1949 and I feel I have read widely you know like I don't just read Canadian writing um, I read writing from all over and it's important to me to, to read um, uh, writing from Africa, writing from China, writing from wherever I can get it, because... The United States? The United States, yes, of course. And um, uh, But I like to read those voices that are not necessarily prominent in, in the canon. I like to find those voices that come from the periphery, that come from um, the places where, you know, it's hard to hear those voices, because... They are telling, uh, first of all, the kind of story that is similar to the story I live in Newfoundland, which was colonized by Britain. So I'm interested in those stories that come from the edge, um, partly because when you're telling a different kind of story, you're using different kind of language. You know, yes. you're using different forms. Mm -hmm. Tú tenías una pregunta, Diana, creo que es momento de hacerla, ¿no? Sobre la literatura de Lisa. Hey. Uh, I was checking your book, uh, Levels of Nudity. I was reading a comment that said that through your literature she could experience what is like being in other people. How do you get to be so empathic with this kind of intimacy? So, I really feel that to, um, to make the reader suspend disbelief so that they are in the story you have to um, you have to engage the senses and and so the reader has to be able to smell and taste and touch and and hear the story they have to be in it and they have to feel it inside their body and so you know often I write about 
sex, for example, because it is incredibly uh, physical. And it, it is that moment, quite often, where our emotions and our thoughts meet with the concrete world in a way that we can't deny. We can't deny that we're in a body in that moment. And so um, I think those stories, when you bring a writer into those, in, a reader into those intimate moments, then they are, they are in the story in a way that allows them to feel it. And that, that is what I try to do with my writing. Es un momento de verdad. You, you, you know, I would just like to say that this experience of speaking with you about my work and uh, being translated is, is a real honor. And I think important in this moment when um, the whole world has been traumatized by what's going on in the United States. And I feel like, you know, we're sitting in this garden and we have the waterfall and and we're talking about what it means to be human and, and interacting like in different languages and um, so it's important for me to say right now uh, that in Canada um, you we, we are so deeply opposed to that wall and feel it you know we're talking about how we feel things in our body and um, we feel the horror of that in Canada as well. You know, where people were marching in the streets for the Women's March. A huge number of people in Canada as well as the United States, as you know. But in Newfoundland, the day of the march, there was a huge snowstorm. And um, so we had to do it online. We had to march online. And there were, my sister, who uh, is a lawyer, spoke online and there were um, thousands of views so you know all over the world people are horrified by what's going on in the states and um, and looking for ways to resist and I think talking about stories and and talking you know making sure we cross these boundaries of language is a big part of that resistance and it is I can't really express uh, fully my gratitude for being invited here. papel de la literatura en este momento en el mundo? Yes, well, I teach in a university and I teach creative writing. And um, I guess this is the moment where literature is being tested. It is like a forge that we would bring a piece of metal into. And, and shape it, and we need to, we, this is the, the moment when we find out if it can do the work that we need it to do, you know? This is the moment when we find out, is it true that the power of stories can change things? And, and what I tell my students is, we have to believe that it is. And uh, we, have to, we have to write about what is, what is happening, what is true, what we feel, how we feel it, and we have to change things that way. Muchísimas gracias. Muchas Diana. gracias. Gracias, Lisa. Thank you.